special, everyone knows that this is like an incredibly special day, right? This is not a regular day. First of all, it's the full moon, what they call the super moon. Everybody feel like right? you're like a little bit floating on the ground? This moon is also known as Guru Purnima, celebration of the Guru. Traditionally, we celebrate uh, Patabi Joyce, the Guru's, Guruji's birthday on the full moon in July. And um, I believe that it's very important to become, to educate yourself. What is Guru. Sanskrit word guru. General meaning is from darkness into light. From ignorance to wisdom. So technically speaking, anything that helps to bring us from ignorance into wisdom, from blindness into awareness, is a guru. That means a guru can be a book, a person, the sun. A guru is actually everywhere. Most profoundly, Guru is right here. The doorway to the heart is the pathway to the Guru. So what does that mean? Again, we want to be as practical as possible. How do I actualize the Guru within and bring it together with the world that is without. In the past, in the more materialistic time, we really believed that the Guru was only on the outside. And maybe initially when you're younger, this is what is necessary for you to do, to project the Guru outwardly. To worship a thing, or to worship a person. But again, we need to understand that this kind of worship is very young, very immature. Again, as your practice deepens, it becomes much more of an integration. I was very fortunate to meet Guruji, Batavi Joyce, and to practice with him for over 10 years fairly steadily. And yes, in the beginning, it was all about him. But then, as the practice matured, I began to realize that he was connected to me. What I saw in him was actually a kind of a reflection of me. Not of me, the small me, but of me, the big me. And so, the 
most profound part of practice began, began to be when I realized that He lived inside of me. That even though He passed away in 2009, His body was gone, I no longer see His person, His image. I miss His person. But at the same time, when His body passed away, He became more present in some ways. Because His Spirit naturally became stronger. That means that resonance became more alive within me. So whenever I practice, He's there. People ask me, well, don't you feel less desire or less attraction to going to Mysore since he's not there? But for me, he's not not there. He's more there. So when I go there, I feel him everywhere. That is the greatest kind of power, the greatest amount of comfort that you can feel, right? That's intimacy. That's love. When you love somebody so much that they become you and you become them. Now obviously we become attached to the material part of each other, to the physical body. That's natural. It's a great blessing, a great joy to be able to share this physical life with each other. But life is much more than just the physical. So it's kind of an interesting kind of situation. You feel severe, deep loss when the body goes. But at the same time, you feel closer. Probably most everybody in the room here has lost somebody that they loved. And while you feel the pain of separation, also pay attention to the fact that they haven't really left. They're still around. They're still a part of you. They still live actively inside of you. You can talk to them. You can relate to them. You can connect to them anytime. It's not a dream, it's not a fantasy. That's the nature of love. So don't believe your mind when your mind says they're gone, because they're not gone. All you have to do is look within your own heart and you can find them, they're right there. So intimacy with the self then becomes intimacy with the guru. Think of the thousands of great souls that have come before us, that have paved the way. Who have done deep practice who lived extraordinary and courageous lives. Right. Made what we have today, who we are today, possible. And again, we think because we identify with the physical realm so much, we think they're gone. But they're not gone. They're woven into the very fabric of the practice that we practice. That makes them present here with us today. We're not alone. We have that available support, that available community. All you have to do is be open to receive their touch. Time to stop listening to your mind so much. Just because you can't see with your physical eyes 
or touch with your physical hand doesn't mean they're not here. If you will but just feel with your heart and see with your spiritual eye, you will realize they're right there. Guruji is here. He's not far away. He's not in some far away heaven or place. He's right here. He speaks through every single one of us. Particularly with people who have studied or practiced with him for intensive periods of time. If you get around them, you can feel him there. All of the older students, if you spend time around them, you can see he's with them. So there is a level of wealth and prosperity in terms of our spiritual lives that is really amazing. So, I talked about being proactive. Do not wait for these things to come for you. Take the steps. Reach out your hand. Reach out your heart. Begin to have conversations with the great spirits. Lee and I don't travel alone. We have a whole gang with us. whole army of spiritual bodyguards and advisors. That's why it's ridiculous for you to say, I practice yoga. You do not. You are blessed by it. You do not do anything. You are carried by it. 